<laughs> All right, so we're going to talk in 9.7. This is the last section for Chapter 9, Solving Systems of Linear and Quadratic Equations. Back in Semester 1, you may have been given a problem that said x equals 5y plus 30 along with x plus 3y equals negative 10. That was a problem that you may have seen on an assignment. Because we asked you to solve systems of equations in semester one. And if you recall, there were three different ways we could do this. We could graph both of those lines. First of all, are these linear equations or are these quadratic equations? Quadratic. quadratic. These are quadratic? Linear. Linear. Right or why are they linear? Because there's not four. There's not four things. Mm -hmm. No, but you're right. They're linear. There's no x squared, is there? Nothing is squared. Everything is to the first power. That makes it a linear equation. Okay. So we started out by putting these on a graph, and where the lines crossed was the solution. We didn't really like graphing, right? No. So then we came up with the substitution method or the elimination method. Do you remember those? Yeah. Okay, so this one is set up to do what? Substitute or eliminate? Substitute. Set up to substitute. So I'm going to take, since all of this 5y plus 30 is equal to x, I'm going to take that and I'm going to substitute that into the bottom equation for the x. So I would say 5y plus 30 that is replacing the x plus the 3y, and it equals a negative 10. When I solve this equation, I now just have one single variable, so I can combine like terms if they're on the same side of the equation. So that would be 8y plus 30 equals negative 10. Now you can add 10 to both sides. I would subtract 30 oh, yeah. from both sides and get 8y equals negative 40. Divided by 8. Divided by 8, so y equals negative 5. negative 5. Now, was I done? No, you're just well, going to plug the y. I had to go back up and I had to plug it in. Did it matter where I plugged it in? No. No, so I'm going to plug it into the top one because that's where it says x equals. So when I plug that in, I get 5 times negative 5 plus 30. Positive 5. X equals negative 25 plus 30. So you're right. X equals a positive 5. And how did I write my answer? 5. five. five. Yeah. As an ordered pair, you put X first and then your Y value. You recall doing that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to do the same thing with systems of linear and quadratic equations. You're going to get a mixture. So, for example, if I had y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8, and my other equation in the system is y equals 2x minus 4. We could graph these. What would the graph of the top equation look like? A parabola. It's a parabola because that's a quadratic. So it would be a U-shaped graph. What would this graph look like? Linear. It's linear. It would be a straight line. So they might cross in one spot. They might cross in two spots. We'd have to find out. Okay, But we don't want to graph those. We want to use a different method. And we're going to use the substitution method. So if all of this is equal to y, then I can substitute that into the bottom equation for the y. So I can say x squared minus 6x plus 8. All of that is equal to y, so it's all going there. Then you finish it out. It equals the 2x minus 4. Now, how do I solve a quadratic? How do I solve something like this? Don't you um, say you're going to add 6x, right? Would you do that? You do the uh, plus 4 first. Okay, I could add 4.
Okay, that would leave me with x squared minus 6x plus 12 equals 2x. And then Katie, what did you say? You got a minus the 2x. With a quadratic, we want it set equal to 0. And the reason we want it set equal to 0 is because if you think of the, the ways that we solved a quadratic equation, we solved them using factoring. We solve them using the square root method. We solve them with the quadratic formula. Okay, this one, the square root method isn't going to be able to be applied because we have that formula. linear term. So we would have to use factoring or the quadratic formula to solve this. And both of those require us to have it set equal to zero. So is that a factorable polynomial? Yep. Actually, it is. If you recognize that, you can put your factors down. I make an x over here. There's a 1x squared, so 1 times 12. And do we have factors of 12 that are going to add up oh. to negative 8? Can I do it like in negative the quadratic Negative 6 and negative 2. Negative oh, 6 and negative cool. 2, yes. Yeah. So x minus 6 and x minus 2 would be my two factors. So, so Cassie, this is what I want to talk to you about. Once you get it factored like this, you're setting your factors equal to zero. And I did the opposite thing. I realized that. Okay, and that means I have to add six. So one of my answers is positive six, and the other answer would be positive two. Now, you're not done. Just like you weren't done when I showed you that first example. You've got to take these up, and you've got to plug them back in so that you can see what goes with them. You're looking for an ordered pair. So when x is equal to 6, you got to go back up here and figure out what y is. I got 2. So I went a little bit too far there. So if I plug, I go back up to the beginning, and it doesn't matter which equation you use, if you put um, the 6 back in for x, what's 2 times 6 minus 4? Uh, 8. So you get 12 minus 4, you get 8. So 6, 8 is one of your solutions. And if I put the 2 back in for x, zero. I'd have 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4, I would get 0. So these would be the two solutions for this system. That 6, 8 would work in both equations, even the one on top that you can't see on my board right now. And the 2, 0 would work in those two equations. So you got two solutions. Had I graphed and done the parabola and the line, they would have crossed at both of those points. Does that make sense? You want to see another one? Okay, we're going to look at the worksheet and we'll do one off of the worksheet and then